Perino Valencize, thank you so much for joining us. I wanted, first of all, to ask you how concerned you were about these fluctuations, about this continuing volatility. Every day we seem to have one investor saying, like, I'm a fine, we can stomach this, and others being a lot more prudent. In which camp are you? Well, I think that in uh, the European markets there is a massive... Uh, restructuring of portfolios. If uh, you discover that Italy is not a risk-free country anymore and that uh, France may not be a risk-free country anymore, uh, all bond managers are going to take action, uh, reduce uh, the weights in these government bond markets and treat them as corporate bonds. And uh, the impact is going to last for a while. The market is going to force the hands of the Germans and of the ECB. So I think unless we come to some uh, permanent resolution to the, to the problem in Europe, and that probably means ECB printing, uh, the Germans giving way for some sort of uh, uh, quantitative easing in Europe. This is going to continue, and we have to adapt to the, uh, to the new environment, I'm afraid. So are you expecting a double dip recession, or at least a recession worldwide? Uh, we are also hearing, of course, that China is actually loosening its monetary policy quite significantly. Well, let's, uh, let's make a distinction. In Europe, we'll give about 80 to 90 percent probability that we uh, see a recession. There is a massive deleveraging, there is a massive austerity um, uh, plan. So Europe is not going to escape a uh, negative uh, rate of growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the U.S., the situation is different. The private sector is doing quite well, uh, quite resilient, uh, even if we see some nervousness on the uh, U.S. financials. Uh, so I think the U.S. will be able to escape a recession. We'll probably continue to grow at 1, 1.5% 1 per annum for the next couple of years. Asia is a completely different story. Uh, as you know, countries such as China, India, and Southeast Asia are... Uh, growing at a reasonable pace. Uh, if there is one positive catalyst uh, around the world which uh, should make us hope for better markets is relaxation of monetary policy in China and uh, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we have printed already a lower inflation number uh, last week in China we're going to see another lower inflation number in December mm -hmm. and if I had to make a prediction I would say that within the next six to eight weeks we will see some sort of loosening of monetary policy in China probably yeah. through the triple R which is the reserve ratio. Now talk to me a little bit about what you're expecting equities to do. I know you also of course uh, as many investors are extremely worried about France so do you have any stocks or any sector groups that you actually prefer at the moment? Well, I think on the equity market in general, we are still underweight equities and we continue to be quite cautious. However, we recognize that we may be uh, affected by a year-end year rally, uh, particularly if the Chinese authorities decide to move on monetary policy. This is going to have a tremendous impact on markets. We know that Asian markets are driven by liquidity. So more liquidity creation in China is going to take markets higher. Nevertheless, the economic outlook is so poor that we find it very difficult to be more constructive on mm -hmm. equities. In emerging market equities, we are neutral, so we have an exposure. We think that there is nothing wrong. Many of these countries have been uh, brought down just in sympathy with Europe. So overall, quite a cautious approach yet, waiting for those Chinese to, uh, to lose in monetary policy. But you see value still in IT because they're very cash rich and at the same time you actually see value in telecoms again because of the dividend that is being paid out. The private sector has got a lot of cash and particularly in the large cap area uh, in the US and even in large caps Europe there is a lot of cash on the books so there is nothing wrong with these corporations. IT, uh, la large, large cap in IT will continue to do quite well uh, pharma will continue to, to do all right in this type of environment. Telecoms paying 6, 7, 8 percent dividend uh, are going to be the darlings of the market. Uh, unfortunately, not a great environment for growth stocks at the moment because the macro picture dominates the world. Uh, but I'm afraid this is the, the environment we uh, are going to stay in unless we see QE from Europe mm -hmm. or a loosening of monetary policy in China. All right, thank you so much. Marino Valencize there, the Chief Investment Officer at Bering Asset Management.